All right. Welcome back to Conscious Evolution. I'm your host, AJ. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, thanks for joining. I do have a few new subscribers now. Thank you all. I appreciate you. Love and light to all of you. Today, tonight, right now, I want to read this book. It's called Seth Speaks on the Eternal Validity of Your Soul. By Jane Roberts and notes by Robert Butts. Butts with a B U T T S. <laughs> like a butt. <laughs> so, Seth Speaks, there's a lot of Seth materials out there that I was unaware of until recently. Honestly, my, uh, my whole journey with this information started with. Everyday Masters had mentioned something in his very first video. Uh, it was like uh, Love or Fear Train or something like that. But he had mentioned Bashar. And he had a link in there. So he, he said in his notes in the description was like, if you are just getting started with like, or, or, or haven't heard of Bashar, haven't seen any of his stuff, start here and left the link to the video. So I started there. And that video is amazing blew my mind absolutely blew my mind I've I watched it listened to it probably 50 times let me make a note real quick I'll put the link to I'll put the link to the Bashar video down below oh I just finished my healing session. I can't believe I, I didn't start with that. Just finished a healing session with a subscriber that goes by the name Reiki Medium 333. Thank you. It was 222. <laughs> I love it. So Reiki Medium 333, thank you for reaching out. They told me they were, they felt like they were being led, like they were being led to um, the reconnecting, like reconnection frequencies, you know, the reconnective healing frequencies. And she's been drawn to them lately. So she uh, came across my channel, or was led to my channel, I believe, as we all, we are all led by our guides by a divine nature all right so let's get into the book little tiny backstory seth speaks the <laughs> seth speaks the eternal validity of your soul so it has an introduction which is many many pages long i'm just going to start at the beginning this book was written by a personality called seth who speaks of himself as an energy personality essence no longer focused in the physical form. He has been speaking through me for over seven years now in twice weekly trance sessions. My psychic initiation really began one evening in September 1963. However, as I sat writing poetry, suddenly my consciousness left my body and my mind was barged by ideas that were astonishing and new to me at that time. On return to my body, I discovered that my hands had produced an automatic script. So, automatic writing. Explaining many of the concepts that I'd been given. The notes were even titled, The Physical Universe as Idea Construction. Well, that's a hell of an introduction to the spiritual world, huh? <laughs> This is right, mind her own business, writing some poetry, and boom! She's got knowledge from beyond this world. And notes to back it up with the title, The Physical Universe as an Idea Construction. So, the Seth material, there's a lot of Seth material. I was unaware of this. Someone recommended this book to me. Matter of fact, I saw um, Bonesy, Bonesy, uh, one of his first videos after his reconnection was reading this book so i ordered it like months ago i think i've had the book for two months and 
I, I think I've had the book for two months and I just started reading it a couple of days ago, but you know, I don't have all that much time in my schedule yet, but big changes coming guys. It's going to be a great year and I hope you stick with me. Oh, real quick, smash that like button, hit the like button. I think it's going to be like right, right here. Hit the button. Subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you bang the bell so you get the notifications. And uh, stick with me, guys. I mean, we're going to have a good ride. We're going to have a fun time, okay? All right. Chapter one. Seth speaks. I do not have a physical body, yet I am writing this book. Session 511, January 21st, 1970. 1970. That was almost 50 years ago. Could you imagine talking about this stuff 50 years ago? It's still taboo now. But 50 years ago? Man. All right, so this is uh, the beginning notes. So like I said, the notes were by Robert Butts. So I think it was her husband or fiance or boyfriend or lover or whatever. So he transcribed what Seth said, and he took notes on the sessions, um, like as far as Jane, like, uh, here we go. In the beginning, these notes, let me mention that there are certain definite changes in Jane when she is in trance and speaking for Seth. Usually Jane goes in and out of trance with remarkable speed. Her eyes aren't closed during sessions except for relatively brief periods, but they can be barely open, say, or half open, or wide open and much darker than usual. She sits for sessions in her Kennedy rocker, but on occasion she gets up and moves about. She smokes in trance and sips on a uh, little wine, beer, or coffee. Sometimes when her trance has been very deep, it takes her a few minutes to really come out of it, as she puts it. Almost always she joins me in a snack after the session, no matter how late it is. Jane's voice in trance can be almost conversational in tone, volume, and pace, but is subject to a wide range of these qualities. Usually it is somewhat deeper and stronger than her own voice, once in a while, her Seth voice is very loud, indeed, much more powerful and much more powerful with definite masculine overtones and with an obvious, tremendous energy behind it. Most of our sessions, however, are fairly quiet. Seth speaks with an accent that's hard to pinpoint. It's been called Russian, Irish, German, Dutch, Italian, and even French. Seth once humorously commented that his way of speaking was actually due to his own cosmopolitan background acquired through many lifetimes. Jane and I think it is simply individual and in that it invokes various responses in people according to their own ethnic and emotional backgrounds. There are two more effects that Jane always manifests while she's in trance. One is a more angular quality in her mannerisms. The other is a rearrangement of her facial muscles. A tautness resulting, I believe, from an infusion of energy or of consciousness. Consciousness is energy. At times, this effect is quite pronounced and I can easily sense the immediacy of Seth's presence. All right, so I'm going to skip through here. Um, I'm just going to skip one little paragraph of the notes. Before the session, Jane said she felt rather nervous. She thought Seth would start his own book this evening. Her feeling of nervousness is quite unusual in these sessions. I offered reassurances, telling her to forget the whole thing and let the book come out in its own way. Now, I bid you, Joseph, a good evening. That reminds me of Bashar. Have you ever heard Bashar? Hello, Bashar. How are you? Good day. <laughs> and you good day. You gotta watch Bashar, man. I love it. Okay. I bid you, Joseph, a good evening. Good evening, Seth. 
our friend Rupert does indeed have stage fright. And to some extent, this is understandable, so I bear with him. However, let us begin with chapter one. Smile. Rupert may write an introduction if he likes. Now you have heard of ghost hunters. I can quite literally be called a ghost writer, though I do not approve of the term ghost. It is true that I am unusually not seen in physical terms. I'm sorry. It is true that I am usually not seen in physical terms. I do not like the word spirit either. And yet, if your definition of that word implies the idea of a personality without a physical body, then I would have to agree that the description fits me. I address an unseen audience. However, I know that my readers exist, and therefore I shall ask each of them now to grant me the same privilege. Yeah. Privilege granted. I write this book through the auspicious of a woman of whom I have become quite fond. To others, it seems strange that I address her as Rupert and him, but the fact is that I have known her in other lives, in other, but the fact is that I have known her in other times and other places by other names. She has been both a man and a woman. And the entire identity who has lived these separate lives can be designated by the name Rupert. Excuse me. Was that in the way? Yeah. Names are not important, however. My name is Seth. Names are simply designations, symbols, and yet since you must use them, I shall also. I write this book with the cooperation of Rupert, who speaks the words for me. In this life, Rupert is called Jane, and her husband, Robert Butts, takes down the words that Jane speaks. I call him Joseph. <laughs> he just is, yeah, whatever. Guess he didn't like their uh, names their parents gave him. My readers may suppose that they are physical creatures bound with physical bodies imprisoned within bone, flesh, and skin. My readers may suppose that they are physical creatures bound within physical bodies imprisoned within bone, flesh, and skin. If you believe that your existence is dependent upon this corporal image, then you feel in danger of extinction. For no physical form lasts, and no body, however beautiful in youth, retains the same vigor and enchantment in old age. If you identify with your own youth or beauty or intellect or accomplishments, then there is the constant gnawing knowledge that, there, that these attributes can and will vanish. I'm writing this book to assure you that this is not the case. Basically, you are no more of a physical being than I am. And I have doned and discarded more bodies than I care to tell. Personalities who do not exist do not write books. I am quite independent of a physical image, and so are you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to yell at you, but you are eternal. Moving on. Consciousness creates form. It's not the other way around. I underlined that. You see that? Consciousness creates form, not the other way around. All personalities are not physical. It is only because you are so busily concerned with daily matters that you do not realize that there is a portion of you who knows that its own powers are far superior to those shown by the ordinary self. There is a portion of you that knows its own powers are far superior than those shown by the ordinary self. Whew. I mean, the first page already, right? You're hooked, aren't you? 
You have each lived other existences, and that knowledge is within you, though you are not consciously aware of it. I hope that this book will serve to release the deeply intuitive self within each of my readers and to bring to the foreground of consciousness whatever particular insights will serve you most. As I begin this book, it is late January in your time, 1970, 50 years ago. Rupert is a slim, dark-haired, quick woman now who sits in a rocker and speaks these words for me. Long balls at 9.35. My consciousness is fairly well focused within Rupert's body. It is a cold night. This is our first experience in writing a complete book in trance, and Rupert was somewhat nervous before the session began. It's not just a simple matter of having this woman speak for me. There are many manipulations necessary and psychological adjustments. We have established what I refer to as a psychological bridge between us. That is between Rupert and myself. I do not speak through Rupert as one might through a telephone. Instead, there is a psychological extension a projection of characteristics on both our parts, and this I use for our communication. Later I'll explain how the psychological framework is created and maintained, for it is like a road that must be kept clear of debris. You would, much, you would be much better off in reading this book if you asked yourself, who are you, rather than asked, who am I? For you cannot understand what I am unless you understand the nature of personality and the characteristics of consciousness. If you believe firmly, if you believe firmly that your consciousness is locked up somewhere inside your skull and is powerless to escape it, if you feel that your consciousness ends at the boundary of your body, then you sell yourself short, and you will think that I am a delusion. But we know better than that here, don't we? I am no more a delusion than you are. And that may be a loaded sentence. Kind of is. I can say this to each of my readers honestly. And it says smile. I am older than you are. And at least in terms of age as you think of it. If a writer can qualify as a kind of authority on the basis of age. Therefore, I should get a medal. I'm an energy personality e essence no longer focused in physical matter as such i am aware of sudden uh, as such i am aware of some truths that many of you seem to have forgotten i hope to remind you of these i do not speak so much to the part of you that you think of as yourself as to the part of you that you do not know that you have to some extent denied and to some extent forgotten the part of you reads this book, even as you read it. That part of you reads this book, even as you read it. Oh, I see. I speak to those who believe in a God and those who do not, and those who believe that science will find all answers as to the nature of reality, and to those who do not. I hope to give you clues that will enable you to study the nature of reality for yourself as you have never studied it before. There are several things that I shall ask you to understand. You are not stuck in time like a fly in a closed bottle whose wings are therefore useless. You cannot trust your physical senses to give you a true picture of reality. Did you hear that? You cannot trust your physical senses to give you a true picture of reality. The senses lie to you. There's way more to this world, to this life, to your body, to you, than, than your five senses. Think about it. They are lovely liars with such a fantastic tale to tell you and that you believe it without question. You are sometimes wiser, more creative, and far more knowledgeable when you are dreaming than when you are awake.
These statements may seem highly dubious to you now, but when we are finished, I hope that you will see that there are that they are plain statements of fact. Seth dude's pretty confident. He understands reality a little bit more than us, huh? All right, we're at 20 minutes. Should I keep going? Whoa, my ears just started ringing really hard. That's a real high pitch frequency I'm picking up right now. Some kind of download. What I will tell you has been told before throughout the centuries and given again when it was forgotten. I hope to clarify many points that have been distorted through the years, and I offer my original interpretation of others, for no knowledge exists in a vacuum, and all information must be interpreted and colored by the personality who holds it and passes it on. Therefore, I describe reality as I know it, in my experience in many layers and dimensions. This is not to say that other realities do not exist. I have been conscious before your earth was formed. To write this book and in most of my communications with Rupert, I adopt from my own bank of past personalities those characteristics that seem appropriate. There are many of us, personalities like myself, unfocused in physical matter or time. Our existence seems strange to you only because you do not realize the true potentials of personality and you are hypnotized by your own limited concepts. Then it's a note, pause, then humorously. You may take a break. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot, right? First four pages of the book. Wow. What do you think about this book so far? You want me to keep reading it, don't you? I know, I picked it up one night and I was up till like midnight just reading the book. I'm like falling asleep and wake up and I had to read like 10 more pages. I'm probably going to do that again tonight. Alright. That's good for this show, guys. I'm running out of battery anyway. Alright, thank you again. What was the uh, YouTube name? I can't, well, I can't remember this. Reiki Medium 333. I don't know if you want me to use your name or not, so I'm just going to call you Reiki Medium 333. Thank you again for seeking out a distance healing session with me, taking advantage of the free healing session. I now have three free sessions left. And I have one subscriber that doesn't live in this country that I'm trying to set something up with, but I'm trying to figure out time zones and it's just a pain in the butt, but waiting for him to email me. Um, I think his name is Yuri. Yuri, where you at, man? Why haven't you emailed me? Come on. Let's get this set up, man. I love doing this stuff. I could talk about it and do it all day, every day. And that's actually the plan. That's the goal. That's what I want to do. Because this is what I love, man. It's my passion. Follow your highest excitement. Follow your, your passion. Follow your highest passion. Your highest excitement to the best of your ability with zero expectations on the result. With zero expectations on the outcome. So have fun, but don't expect it to turn out any, any particular way. Oh, wow. She emailed me about her session already. I ended, I, I stopped the session over 30 minutes ago. She sent me a paragraph of her experience. Okay, so here's a quick story from Reiki Medium 3, 333. She emailed me, or he, she, Reiki Medium 333, they emailed me saying, interested in having a session, she's been, uh, that I have been drawn 
to the reconnection lately. It's popping up everywhere I look. So I've watched a lot of videos. Thank you for offering. Talk to you soon. So then I scheduled it with them. And I uh, just got the email. I emailed them when I was finished and let them know. I said, please, you know, please send me the email with your, you know, what's your experience? What happened? They said, uh, I was feeling so much energy about a half hour before the session. I could not sit still. I got up, went outside, walked around, letting some energy flow through me to the earth and grounded myself. I love you guys. You know, be the change that you want to see. It all starts with you. Love yourself. Don't love yourself. You can't love anyone else or anything. And if you can't love yourself, then you, you should work on that. All right. I love each and every one of you. Have a blessed day, blessed night, and I'll be back real soon.